Are you afraid of mice or rats getting into your home? Well, you should be. Every year, mice and rats cause millions of dollars of damage in homes. They chew wires, they eat through insulation, and they are even the cause of many undetermined fires. So I want you to arm yourself with caulk because properly using caulk around the outside perimeter of your house will help you keep these critters out so you don't have a mouse infestation. Because remember, it's not just one or two or three mice that you see. A couple can make 60 mice in one year's time. And then those mice partner up and then they make 60 and then they make 60. Now I want you to understand that it takes a dime sized opening, just a dime size, for a mouse to crawl into. Obviously we need a bigger opening for a rat, but a general field mouse can get through a quarter inch gap. That's all it takes. So we're gonna first identify what are some areas around your house that they're accessing so that you can begin to seal them up. But I wanna make sure that you subscribe because what I try to do here is teach you very practical homeownership skills that you can use every day. So make sure that you tune into my other video, which is how to properly open a tube of caulk. So go to that video so you can learn how to do that the right way. And then also, if you click up here, you can gain access to my girl's guide to caulk. It is a hour to having the perfect bathtub. So it's a PDF download and it'll walk you through the process so that you can have a nice clean tub or shower because it adds value to your home and just makes it more enjoyable to get into a clean shower. So let's dive into the ways that you can seal up and shut the buggers out. Most important thing is for you to identify where the holes are. So you wanna be looking for any gaps or cracks where the siding meets the concrete in your house along the base. You wanna look in your brick or stone facades to see if there are any gaps and cracks. Now remember, with brick face, there are little gaps that you will find between some bricks towards the bottom. Those are called weep holes and those are designed to allow any moisture that gets behind the brick to flow out. Do not caulk those because then you will trap moisture behind the brick and cause more problems inside. But you can caulk up and seal up other holes. Now also, don't forget about the utilities on the side of your house. This is the primary spot where mice tend to enter homes. So you want to inspect the gas line, the electric line, where your um, HVAC ventilation uh, pipes come out. All of those utility lines and pipes need to be inspected and you need to caulk and seal as you find open areas. And don't forget, you wanna check the garage seal on the underside of your door and the sides and top because that's another easy place for mice to get in. But garage doors is a whole nother video we'll get to soon. So what are some of the supplies you might need in sealing out the mice? I have here a piece of wood because there are some occasions where you might have um, a wood surface that has a crack in it um, that mice are able to access. And perhaps on the inside of your house, you can just put a wood barrier. So perhaps in a shed or something, there's a hole. You can just nail or screw the wood on the inside and that seals it up super easy. You can also use a mending plate or steel mesh stapled in place on the inside as well. Now for the caulk projects, we're gonna be looking at steel wool. Mice do not like to chew through the steel wool. It literally will hurt their nose and their mouth so they will move on. So we're gonna learn how to use the steel wool. Now you're also gonna need this, which is called caulk saver. It is a uh, foam tube. That's all it is. It's made of pure foam and it is flexible and it is for filling large gaps. So you would pack this into a large gap and then you would apply your caulk bead in front of it because if you try to fill a deep crack with caulk, it just falls into the back and you're wasting a tube and there's nothing there to hold it in place. This gives you some grip. And then we have spray foam. And the spray foam 
is great for those deep cracks as well because you can fill in the area and, and backfill it and then you can caulk around the front edge. There may be times when you want to use a combination of these. You'll put a little bit of steel wool, maybe you'll spray a little bit of the expandable foam and then you'll caulk around the outer surface. You have to assess your hole and gap and see which of these is going to fill it most efficiently. And then when it comes to buying the caulk for this project, because we're focused on the outside of our house, you wanna make sure that you are choosing an exterior grade caulk. And what I mean by that is that it says that it's rated for exterior use, so it is designed to withstand the temperature changes that are gonna come with it. Um, again, find one that matches the facade as best as possible. You really don't want to see caulk products and patching products. So, um, you know, they come in almond, they come in black, they come in white. So choose one that matches. And remember that it might say it has a lifetime warranty. I don't buy it. I've never seen a caulk last more than five to seven years. So be prepared to recheck those areas in a few years and reassess what you need to do to combat the critters. So I wanna show you how you can fill three holes with different products. So again, this is a simulation. So these are three half inch holes that I created, which are roughly the size of a dime. So the first one I wanna show you is using the steel wool. Ideally, you wanna unroll your steel wool. It, it comes in uh, like a tri-folded uh, clump when you buy it in a package. There are different grades. You can buy it from very soft to more coarse. You know, I would go for a more coarse version because it's gonna be harder on that uh, mouse's nose and teeth. So you're gonna get your caulk and you're going to apply some beads of caulk to your steel wool, okay? Now I am using painter's caulk here just because I don't wanna get silicone all over me for the demo, but ideally the silicone is the way to go for your project. It's just messy. You might wanna wear gloves when you go to do that. So now you can take that steel wool and you're gonna get it where you have all of that caulk stuck inside of it because it'll give you better grip because not only are you putting in a hole, but it's sticking together. So now you can pack that hole with steel wool and you wanna put it in there as far as you can and pack it in so that the little buggers have a real hard time getting past it or pulling it out because they can do that as well. So you're gonna pack it in, you're gonna push it. You can take a screwdriver and push it through. I'm pulling it out the back because I can. Now, I probably have a little too much right here, but the idea is you're gonna pack the hole. You want to push it all the way in as firm and flat as you can. Use a screwdriver from that front there and push it in. Now, you can apply some caulk right over that and smooth it over, but it's hanging out the back. It's really going to make this mouse work and they're not going to like the steel wool. So that's one option is to pack that area. Now, another option is the caulk cord. Now we only need a little piece here because we're using this little wood platform. So I can put this in again with caulk and that will help keep this in place. And we'll put this little guy in there. Now I'm using this sideways and plugging the hole. If you have a long area, you would just put some caulk in there and lay it into place and pack it if you have a long strip, and then you can caulk in front of it. And then the last one is the spray foam. Now when using this, it's important that you remember these cans, they dry up quickly. It doesn't matter what brand you use. And they have this tiny little tube that the foam comes out. So when you're doing this project, you want to identify all the places in your house that you need to do this to up front because this is going to clog off and you probably get just one day's use out of it. So do that first. You can give it a little shake and you can apply this foam inside. It is expandable foam. You only need a little bit because it's going to puff up and as it starts to puff up, you want to let it dry. When it is dry, you can take a utility knife and cut off the excess. Don't touch it while it's wet because it sticks to everything. Now, I could come along here. I could push this in a bit. I could put some foam here if I wanted. And I could multiply some of these techniques and use different ones on top of the other to do whatever it takes to seal out my little critters. So I hope you will try these products at home. 
because these are easy, simple to use, they're not expensive, but they are effective at keeping critters out of your home. So I hope that you subscribe. I have several more videos coming in the next few weeks that are focused on winterization. And also make sure that you go to this blog post because I'll have more details in the blog post about this project. And you can subscribe there to my newsletter where I go into even more depth with my subscribers there and share more insights to save you money, stress, and time because that's what we do at Hip Chicks.